Hello and welcome to T-Boom Photography on YouTube and of course also to tboom.tumblr.com. The dots are actually really important, right? Without them, nothing would work. Welcome to this quick tip. I wanted to say the Lightroom quick tip, but it's more than a Lightroom quick tip. So uh, yeah, um, in the last days, I got a couple of messages concerning um, the crispness and sharpness of my photos and uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's talk about that for a couple of minutes. When we're talking about sharpness in photography, there are a couple of different factors involved. Number one, of course, the most important thing, you have to get the best possible photo out of your camera. You cannot rescue a shot in post-processing. I see a lot of tutorials and blog posts and stuff on the web saying how to rescue a shot. I don't think that is possible. You can make something very different out of a shot and you can make, you can make it interesting maybe, but you cannot make a great photo out of a bad shot, not the way it was intended to be. That's maybe I'm alone with that opinion, but okay. So what are the factors in camera? Of course, we have to get sure that everything is in focus. And that especially applies, of course, to photos with a very shallow depth of field, because only a couple of, uh, sometimes not, not, not even just inches, but, but fractions of inches or centimeters, millimeters, will make a huge difference. When we're taking portraits, for example, we usually focus on the eyes and the eyes have to be in focus. And if there's just a tiny little difference in there, so maybe we just uh, we focus on the tip of the nose and the eyes are slightly blurred, that already makes a huge difference and makes the photo look weird because that's the first thing we look in a portrait, usually in a portrait with, with, with a, um, a face uh, scene in it, of course, are the eyes. We try to connect. So that's something we have to really get sure that the eyes are in focus. And uh, yeah, as I said, with photos with a very shallow depth of field, so the range of how much uh, that is acceptably sharp, that has to really fit. And so what I do when I think, okay, this is the photo I want to work with, then I zoom in on the display of my camera and check whether really everything is crisp and clear and sharp. The next thing, motion blur. Of course, with a, sh uh, with a very uh, long exposure time, chances are that the photos are blurred. So trying to avoid that, working with a higher shutter speed, working with the image stabilization on, stuff like that. Also, again, zooming in the photo after uh, we took it help a great deal to check whether we maybe have to reshoot the photo. And then, well, camera sharpening. That is something I personally don't like camera sharpening at all. Why? Because I don't think that I have, well, I don't think, I know that I don't have full control over sharpening in my, in my camera. Camera sharpening is never really a good idea. Sometimes, okay, we have to work fast and when we're shooting JPEG, and that's the thing, basically, actually. When we shoot RAW, none of these settings do have any effect on our RAW files. The only settings that really affect our RAW files are aperture, exposure time, and ISO. All the rest can be changed without uh, losing quality in post-processing. So there is no need to really um, have that in mind or something. But when I shoot JPEG, which sometimes happens, I still, I turn the in-camera sharpening down completely because I want to sharpen my photos in post to get the best possible quality. The display on our cameras or the displays on our cameras are really, really tiny. So everything seems to be very often perfectly in focus and crisp and clear and sharp. But when we look at the photos in full screen on our monitors, sometimes we see, okay, it's not really great. And very often the camera overdo sharpening. We have these dark and bright fringes around edges. So I, per I prefer to do sharpening in post processing in Lightroom. And that is 
what I will show you now in Lightroom. So usually when I shoot raw, I sh um, shoot for editing and you see that I shot raw here because it is a CR2 file, uh, a Canon raw file because I'm working with a Canon camera. And uh, if we zoom in, you see the photo, yes, it's okay-ish. It is in focus, but it's not really crisp and clear and sharp. Why is that? Number one, as I said, uh, this is a raw file, so there's no sharpening applied. When importing a photo to Lightroom, what Lightroom does, and we can see that here in the detail tab, Lightroom already does some sort of a pre-sharpening, but in most cases, for me, this is not enough. So we will have to tweak that. We're going to talk about that in a minute. One thing I really want to mention, and that is, uh, I didn't say that before, if we want to get the crispest and clearest and sharpest picture, we have to use, or we might want to use our cameras, no, our lenses, sweet spot. What is the sweet spot? The sweet spot is the setting of our lens that gives us the crispest and clearest and sharpest picture. So when we have a prime lens, for example, Prime lens meaning a lens with only one focal length. For example, classic the 50 millimeter lens or a 50 millimeter lens, then a certain aperture will give us the crispest and clearest and sharpest picture. That has to do with physics. I don't want to go into detail, light refraction, stuff like that. When we're working with a zoom lens, meaning a lens with a range of focal lengths, like for example, the classic 1855 kit lens, the infamous 1855 kit lens that many people t say, uh, it is terrible. It is not that terrible. Because if you work at that lens's sweet spot, meaning the uh, combination of focal length and aperture that works best, these lenses will give you quite decent or even very good pictures. How to find out the sweet spot of your lens? Well, one thing is you can, of course, Google, use your, use your lens's name, right? And Google sweet spot, you will find a lot of entries. And these are a great starting point to play around yourself. So take a couple of test shots and compare them. Also try to do that not in JPEG, but in RAW, because JPEG, your camera sharpening will, will apply to that. Even the same model of the same brand might have a slightly different sweet spot. Usually the sweet spots are around at around the middle of the possible aperture. So mostly at around f8, f11, sometimes very different. Sometimes they're down at f5.6 or something. So Google that, do a Google search and play around with that. You see I shot with the EF28135 in that, uh, for that photo. I was at f5.6. And I shot at a comparatively high shutter speed. Well, at 135, 1/200th of a second is not really high, but of course I had camera stabilization on, and the camera stabilization of that camera of that lens is pretty good. Um, that's that is far from the sweet spot. I mean, zoomed in completely, and then even wide open aperture. But I wanted to have that very shallow depth of field. The, the, the sh most shallow depth of field that is possible with that lens. So I had to go with that. And you see that slight halo, very soft edges. So mm -hmm, not really crisp and clear and sharp. It has a certain charm. I have to admit that. I kind of like that. But I want my photo to be more sharp. How can I do that? And that's when we go into the detail tab of um, Lightroom and we see these four sharpening sliders the amount, the radius, the detail, and the masking. Of course, self-explanatory, the amount is just how much sharpening will kick in. And you see even the graininess of that photo will be sharpened, of course. So, hmm, yeah, I don't want that. We can get rid of that, very simple, I'll show you. 
how do I find out my... I don't have a, a sharpening preset or something because I want to sharpen my photos each and every one individually because each and every photo needs individual treatment, right? Because each and every photo is different. So what I do to find out the perfect sharpening for my photo is to crank up the amount to its maximum so that I see the effect. And then I'll play around with the radius. So bring the radius up, that is too much. Bring the radius down again, bring it up again, bring it down again. So it's, it's a back and forth and I see, okay, it seems to be at around 1.9, it seems to be the right radius. But it's still something, it's not really precise, right? Well, there is a thing. You can hold down the Alt key or Option on Mac and I'll show you what happens. Holding down the Alt key, Option on Mac, clicking and dragging the radius slider and you see the photo turns black and white and we see the edges. We see the edges that get sharpened. When we have the radius all down, very only very fine details will be affected and if I crank it up, crank it up, crank it up, you see, yeah, at around 1.8, 1.9 for that photo, this seems to be the setting for me. Same goes, by the way, for um, the amount. I hold down Alt Option on Mac, click and drag, and you see the photo turns black and white. It turns black and white because in black and white we see sharpening much or sharpness much more detailed than in color. So you see how soft that photo was, but that's just raw file, right? We have to do that. So we'll bring that up, bring that up, bring that up to the amount. And I think that's that's okay, 71. And we can do the same thing for detail, holding down the Alt key option on Mac, click and drag, and we see more detail here, less detail on the left. So I want detail here, but okay, we see still graininess here. And that's where masking comes in handy holding down the Alt key, clicking and dragging, and you see everything that is white will be sharpened and everything that is black will not be sharpened. So I can bring up the slider just to the amount when only really the edges get sharpened, like here at around 80, and we have a crisp and clear and sharp picture zooming out and the photo will really pop. That is very, very handy. You can really, really precisely dial in your sharpness for your photo. There's one more thing that you can do, maybe even probably should do, is when exporting your photo. If we're in the export dialog, there is a tab that allows output sharpening. Sharpen for screen, sharpen for matte paper, sharpen for glossy paper. I usually don't use sharpening for screen when outputting for the web because that's what I did anyway, right? I put my sharpening in um, while editing. When I print my photos for matte paper or glossy paper, or matte paper or glossy paper, I can use the um, amount of sharpening low, standard, high. You have to try that yourself. I rarely print my own pictures. When I did, I usually just use standard. So uh, because printing pictures, prints will always be softer than what we see on screen. So uh, we have to overdo sharpening a bit for that. So yeah, I hope this helped a bit. I hope this made things a bit clearer and sharper and crisper for you. <laughs> this one's for today. Bye bye. Till next time. There's an easy way to never miss any of my videos and that is simply to subscribe to my channel.